What if you could tell when someone's plotting against you? See beyond the fake smile and insincere friendship? Would the world be a better place? A woman who was trying to put her life back together and thought that she had found a friend. She let him move in with her when he had nowhere else to go. She never imagined that the so-called friend was a cold-blooded killer. Let's dive in. At 47 years old, Julie Riley was trying to put her life back together. The years where she left her mom to raise her daughter while she was still out partying with random guys were over and she was ready to do what was best for her family. She was now talking to her family, getting help for drinking, dependency, and reuniting with her daughter and grandson. She hoped to make up for all those lost years. I've just grew up with my grand, that's what I feel good. She would always phone, she would try and be somebody else. Julie had a really tough start in life. Her first daughter died before she was even a year old, and the other one could barely stand her. Her search for love and acceptance got her into a string of bad relationships that only made her miserable. At some point, she suffered a brain injury that ended up affecting her memory and speech. But Julie was willing to make up for all her mistakes. She was now super close to her grandson, and she and her daughter were finally getting along. She was also going to all her doctor's appointments and recovery meetings. Life was giving her a second chance and things were looking up. Then in December 2017, Julie met someone, a guy who would destroy her life and leave her family in pain. His name was Andrew Wallace. He had just broken up with his girlfriend and needed a place to stay. He knew that Julie lived alone and that she needed constant care due to her brain injury. So he offered to take care of her if she would let him move in and Julie agreed. When Julie's family heard this, they were not happy. Due to her history of bad relationships, her family thought that she was making a terrible mistake and that Andrew seemed like bad news. Julie's mom, Margaret, tried to talk her out of it, but refused to listen. She said that she knew the guy and that he was going to take care of her. The last phone call I wrote for Julie, she told me that she was moving uh, somebody in, a lodger in. She think of moving this lodger in and I disagreed with her. Margaret did not hear from her daughter again until February 15th, 2017, when she got a call from the hospital telling her that Julie had not shown up to her doctor's appointments. At first, Margaret didn't think much of it. She was used to Julie going off the rails like this, but she always came around after she realized her mistake, so Margaret waited. Days went by, still no sign of Julie. She did not call or show up to any of her appointments. Her family tried reaching her, but the calls did not go through. They went to her appointment in Glasgow, but Julie wasn't there. There. Something was not right. Because she just hadn't been to appointments and stuff, that's when I was like, I just knew something was up. Like, she would always go. Due to her brain injury, Julie's family was worried that she might have lost her memory and got lost somewhere. So in March 2017, they went to the police and filed a missing persons report. That's when the search for Julie finally began. Security camera footage showed her last sighting at a local grocery store on February 6th, and she was with a man who was later identified as Andrew. Nothing seemed out of place, and Julie looked calm and collected. The police also found out that this was also the last day that Julie had used her bus pass. In Investigators then went to check her apartment to see if they would find something that explained her strange disappearance. They found the house looked pretty normal and recovered her diary where she wrote everything she did daily, probably due to her memory loss. Nothing in her diary told them that she had any plans to go away. The police scoured the city trying to find Julie. They talked to everyone that knew her and brought in police dogs, helicopters, and divers to help in the search, but found nothing. A four-week search failed to find her, and they handed the case over to Scotland's major investigators investigation teams, also known as MITs. This is an elite team of detectives that handles major and complex cases around Scotland. The first thing the detectives did was go back to Julie's apartment. They noticed that the house had been thoroughly cleaned, as if someone was trying to hide something. They then used luminol to see if they could find something unusual in the house. Luminol is a type of chemical which is mostly used in crime scenes that have been cleaned up. The chemical detects traces of blood by producing a blue glow that can only be seen in the dark. And what they found was both shocking and disturbing. When they sprayed the luminol in Julie's apartment, they found traces of all over the house, including the living room and bedroom. They also saw what appeared to be a footprint and drag marks heading towards the bathroom. It was pretty obvious that something sinister had happened in that house, and the detectives now had to figure out what exactly happened. Was Julie still alive? If not, what had happened to her? And who had done this? Investigators started looking at the one person that had been close to Julie before she vanished, Andrew Wallace. They found out that Andrew had been telling neighbors that Julie moved to another town. They also found security 
security footage that showed that on February 14th, Andrew had used Julie's card to buy stuff at the grocery store. The detectives questioned Andrews about these activities, but he tried to play dumb by replying to each question with no comment. He was, however, arrested and charged with fraud, giving the detectives time to look more into him. They talked to some of Andrew's friends and got some pretty chilling info. They learned that between February 6th to 10th, Andrew had dropped by one of his friend's houses with scratches on the side of his face and some in his hands. When the friend asked him about it, he claimed that he had been in an accident and didn't want to talk about it. Andrew had also gone to another friend's house, carrying two large suitcases. He claimed that he had hit a deer while driving and was selling the meat. All this information led investigators to believe that Andrew had done something bad to Julie, really bad, but they couldn't charge him unless they found her remains. When they checked the search history on Andrew's phone, they found some pretty incriminating stuff. One time, he looked at the fastest and most effective ways to use a and then he searched someone with a he also looked at pictures of and suitcases. The detectives were now convinced that Julie's remains were in these two suitcases he'd been seen with. And so, they started searching the city for any abandoned suitcases. They found several bags that matched the description, but none of them contained human remains. Then, on April 19th, 2018, investigators got what they were looking for, but not in the way they expected. A man called the police to report that he'd found what looked like a part in his front yard. Investigators rushed to the scene and found that it was a thigh bone. It was later identified as Julie's through DNA testing. A few days later, another person in the area found Julie's left thigh buried in his front yard. It was now clear that Julie were spread out in different places in the city. This was a huge blow to the family, who had still been hoping that Julie was only hurt, but alive. It was devastating to imagine the kind of horror she went through in the hands of someone she had taken in, thinking he was a friend. She seemed happy. She was a little deaf. She'd have given all the money, wouldn't it? They tried convincing Andrew to tell them where he had buried the rest of her but he refused to say anything. Around this time, investigators found some very alarming details about Andrew's past. Apparently, he had done something like this before. In 1992, when he was just 15 years old, he stabbed a woman named Caroline Packer, and she too passed away. At that time, he went by the name Andrew Leadham, and he was only locked up for 10 years. When he got released, he changed his last name and got a job in Glasgow as a butcher. That's where he met Julie, and she became his next target. Andrew later pleaded guilty to killing Julie, and he was sentenced to 28 years in prison. However, he refused to disclose where he had buried the rest of her Julie's family was desperate. They tried begging and pleading with him to tell them what he had done with her, but he refused. I hope that if he has a heart, he could now please tell us where he has put my sister and let her come home to be put to rest properly and the dignity she deserved. Investigators continued searching for her, urging anyone with information to come forward. Then, in June 2019, about a year since her disappearance, Andrew finally came clean. He told the detectives where to find the rest of her After an agonizing nine months, Julie's family was finally able to say their farewells to her. She was laid to rest next to her first daughter, who had passed away in December 1993. Julie might have made some mistakes in her past, but she didn't deserve such a and ending. Andrew preyed on her vulnerability and trusting nature. He took away her chance of ever making up for the lost time with her daughter or seeing her grandson grow up. As if that's not enough, he mercilessly her family when he refused to tell them what he had done with her Julie could still be alive if this monster had stayed in prison where he belonged. That's the end of today's video. What do you think about this case? Did Andrew get the punishment he deserved? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section.